In today's video, we will discuss how this washing machine motor is controlled and functions. Because its speed is sometimes slow, and sometimes its motion is fast. And how is all this motion in this motor? Because normally, if we pass electricity directly through it, in that case, it rotates the fastest. But inside the washing machine, it sometimes rotates clockwise and anti-clockwise. And how is all this work done? So in today's video, we will discuss all these things. One of our viewers commented as well how does it function and how is this washing machine motor controlled? If some friends know how it works then well and good, and if you don't know I will tell you all this in detail. So let's start this video. The washing machine which has come for repairing, the brand name of the washing machine is Smeg, which is an Italian machine. So let me tell you, how are all these functions happening in this machine, and how is this motor controlled? Now you can see it here. I have opened the washing machine covers to make you understand. This washing machine is a non-inverter that comes with a belt and pulley. So it has a PCB here through which it is controlled, whereas all the front load washing machines are controlled through PCB board. If you have an old model of a washing machine, or a timer washing machine, then this washing machine is controlled through the timer. But how these washing machines are controlled, which is actually our topic. Let me open this PCB and tell you how is this washing machine controlled. After this, we will see actually how many voltages does this motor gets, and, how it works, and how the motor speed is controlled. Now you can see I have opened the motor from its body. We will also understand how the motors work and how their connection and wiring are made. If I see its connector, let me count the connector wires. It has 7 wires in this connector. But these are not 7 wires. The motor has 6 wire connections, so this is why I opened it to check it. So now let me show you it has 6 wires present in it. If you observe it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This red wire is of the Teco. It is installed here to control and detect the speed of the motor. Let me take this motor to the table and show you what is inside it. Now you can see I have brought the motor to the table. See, the taco is something like this. Our primary focus is on the speed of the washing motor in this video, showing you this is important. It has a coil inside it. You can check this coil on these two points of red wire. You will get some value. It can be 50, 60, or 100 ohms. Companies make different values of tacos. It has a magnet inside it, which works. It is installed on the armature shaft inside the motor. This magnet rotates with the rotation of the motor. This device and the magnet, both together, are installed to detect the motor speed. When this magnet rotates inside it, this coils produces voltages, and these voltages goes directly towards the PCB board. Then PCB detects at what speed is the motor rotating, because when this magnet rotates at the highest speed the max voltages it produces, AC voltages are produced here, then the PCB converts the high volts to low, then it tells the microcontroller that at what speed is the motor rotating now. Next, I will now check the voltages coming from the taco. What are the maximum voltages coming from the taco? See, I made the connection already. See, these red wires are of the taco. I will attach a multimeter to it to check the voltages coming from the taco. Now I will connect one probe at one point and the other probe with the second point. I will try to keep a little distance from the probes. They should not join together. Now I will pass electricity through the motor. We will check both the AC and DC voltages. I gave electricity, and it is rotating at the max speed. You can see 35, 36 volts, and it will keep increasing. Let's check it on DC as well. It is not showing volts on DC. It's only showing voltages on AC. The speed and voltages will keep increasing. I will switch off the motor now. See, as its speed is decreasing, the voltages are also reduced, and these voltages are used to detect the speed of the washing machine. The voltages are zero now, and the motor is stopped. This way, the speed is checked. Now you can see I have opened its complete cover, and this is its PCB board. Let me understand you how its motor is controlled through this PCB board. Let me open this PCB from here, and let's understand how this PCB controls the motor speed. First of all, we need to understand what components are installed here in it. 
The PCB has SMPS which is used to on the PCB, this is chopper, and this is its switching IC. Now you can see this PCB have some bigger components as well, 1, 2, 3 and the 4th relay is not installed here. 3 relays are installed in it. For the 4th relay a jumper wire is used instead, I will make you understand this as well. Now see, the main electric is connected on this point, the neutral and phase wire. This relay is used for the heater, and its function is to switch on and off the heater. Then these two relays are used to control the motor but with the help of this component which is a triac. So the motor is controlled with the help of triac as well. Now coming back to these two relays, they help the triac to rotate the motor whether clockwise or in anti-clockwise rotation. Let me explain to you its internal diagram later in the video, through which you will be clear how all these functions. First of all, we will understand how are these relays installed. I will tell you here first on the PCB. So when we see this relay, it has five legs, the thicker prints are of the load, and these thinner prints are for the coil. I have another relay. Let me explain to you how this relay works. It has five legs, three points are here, and two points are here. This center point is the common point. We pass load here, and this load is shifted to whether this pin or this pin. These two pins are of the coils inside it, used to energize this relay. And let me tell you how it works. So I have another relay which I have already opened from its cover. This way, we will understand it more precisely. See these three points here on the relay. These two points, the side ones, are the point of this coil. See, this point is attached to the coil, and this second point is also connected to the coil. These points aim to energize this relay or switch on this relay. Now let me tell you about this center pin attached to this metal point. It is the common point or the center point of the relay. Now, this point turned here is attached to this pin. This second point on the upper portion is attached here. If we see this upper portion closer, this point is attached upward. It is empty downwards and has no such thing installed in it. When we energize this relay, the upward point will go downward. What will happen as it was attached to this point of the relay? Then it will be connected to this point of the relay. And this is the way it works. So let me show you now, by energizing it, how it will work. Now it will work. See, now the point has come downward. As soon as I stop passing electricity, it will go back, and this is its function. Now, we will understand its wires. As I showed you, the motor wires have six wires in them, and we will take measures on it. You can see here the two wires are for the taco, then R1 and R2 are written here, this R1 and R2 are for the rotary, or you can call it armature as well, then see ST1, ST2, and ST3 is written. The ST3 is not present in it because this motor is of six wires, but if it could be a seven wires motor, then ST3 could have worked. The ST1 and ST2 are available in it, which are the stator's wires. These four wires are brought here, and after getting them here, this relay combination is created, through which the motor clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation is handled. Now, you can see I have made its complete diagram. I have drawn all the wiring made on the PCB, which I explained to you. So please observe this, the R1 and R2 are the wires of armature or rotor coming here. The SD1 and the SD2 are of the stator. The motor has only four wire connection. See, the Commodore line is given here on this point, the three points I told you, so with one of these points, see with this relay and the other relay as well, both are attached in this way with line wire. Now, this happens here when the machine is in off condition. Then this point and this point are connected together. In the same way, this point and this point will be connected together. Now, this is generally off condition, and in this condition, the motor will not work at all. Now, what happens? We want to rotate the machine in any one direction. We will have to switch on any of the one relays. So when we switch on this relay, see, we switched on this relay. This relay, after switching on, gets connected to this point. This relay, after getting connected, then what happens? Let me make you understand this as well. So see, the electricity after passing through these wires comes to SD1, the SD1 becomes the line now. So now, what will happen? 
the triac will be triggered with neutral through the gate, this gate will get on, and the neutral attached to M1 will start flowing to M2. This means the neutral will pass here this way, the more the gate will open, the more electricity will be given to the gate, that much more current will start flowing here. And when the current will flow less the speed of the motor will be slow, and when the flow of the current will be more, the motor speed will be faster. Now next, the SD1 is the line, and the neutral started flowing to R2. The condition for the machine to operate is that R1 and SD2 should be connected together, as when these two points are connected, the machine will work, otherwise, it will not. Let's see if R1 and SD2 are connected or not. Let's follow R1. The ZAR1 is attached to this point, and now let's move forward. See, it is attached to this point with the relay as well. This relay is in the off position, and when we pass through these wires from the relay, SD2 is connected with R1. The motor will start rotating in one direction when they are connected together. We want to rotate it in another direction, so what will we have to do for that? We will have to of this first relay again. So let's off this first relay. When we switch it off, the machine will get off again because the flow of electrons will also be stopped from the gate. This way, the triac will also be stopped. Now electricity flow here is cut off, and we want to rotate the motor in another direction. The second relay will be switched on, and now this relay is switched on. Now we will see that to run the machine, will this wiring satisfy the law we made? For knowing it, let's see this, the line is passing here to the relay, then from the relay to the SD2. The line is now flowing in SD2. The neutral will flow at R2 when the gate is triggered. Now we will see whether R1 and SD1 are joined together or not. Let's follow R1. See, when we follow R1, the first relay is off. Due to being off, it is connected here with this point. When we followed this wire, we found that ZAR1 is connected with SD1. When both the R1 and SD1 are connected, the motor will start rotating in another direction. Now, if we want to accelerate the motor speed, this gate will be given more voltages through which, again, the flow of electrons or current will be more. This way, the motor speed will be increased. This gate will be switched on for numerous amounts of time. It will not be kept off. When the gate is kept on for a longer time, the speed of the machine will increase. When the speed increases, the PCB, through the voltages of the taco, will detect the RPM of the motor. By detecting its RPM, it will control the motor speed. But if the motor RPM increases, it will switch off the relay for some time. And automatically, the current flow from the gate will decrease. If it again needs more RPM, it will switch on the relay and the triac gate as well. This way, the cycle will continue. This was for today's video. I will catch you at the next one. I don't really know.